This is Mike Johnson with the National Weather Service in San Angelo, Texas, and we're going to take a look at a thunderstorm phenomenon called a microburst. Uh, what a microburst is, is basically a descending column of air that makes contact with the ground, spreads out horizontally in all directions, and con can cause significant uh, wind damage over very small areas, typically less than about three miles in diameter, uh, with wind speeds uh, sometimes approaching 100 miles per hour. So let's take a look at uh, an animation of a uh, microburst. Uh, this is a graphical representation of what we would see. And in this image here, uh, we can see that uh, precipitation is beginning to fall from the cloud base. But uh, you can see the, the striations indicate that there's some evaporation taking place in the dry subcloud layer. Well, as the precipitation continues uh, to, uh, to fall, more evaporates and becomes cooler than the surrounding environment. Uh, as we all know, cool air likes to sink with warm air rising, uh, which creates some instability in the atmosphere. And with this uh, cool air aloft, the uh, cooler air associated with the downdraft will now begin to sink and accelerate down toward the surface. And we can see that happening here in the third image. And as we go through in time, we see this uh, accelerate to the surface, and when it makes contact, it spreads out in all directions. So this is what causes uh, a majority of thunderstorm winds uh, that we call downbursts. Uh, we have two different classes called a microburst or a macroburst, and they're only defined uh, really based on the, uh, the size of the area affected. So let's take a look at what happened in San Angelo yesterday out at Mathis Field. Well, taking a look at the radar here, there's really not a lot uh, that uh, one would be concerned about. Uh, San Angelo is located uh, right up here where the cursor is showing with uh, the San Angelo uh, radar located to the southwest and the airport is located just a little farther to the south and south southwest uh, from the radar. So if we put this into motion what we see is these uh, showers with a uh, little bit of thunder involved as well uh, move across the area and continue on to the south really not causing uh, much concern at all until you uh, you know look out the window here at the airport and we notice that uh, the winds are extremely strong. Well, so what happened? Uh, doesn't look like it's a, a extremely dangerous storm, but as this storm moved across San Angelo, we'll go to the base velocity, and the red in this image uh, indicates winds that are moving away from the radar, with the green indicating winds that are moving toward the radar. So as we move ahead here, we can see, if we zoom way in here, um, looking just to the southwest of the radar, the brighter reds indicate uh, wind speeds that are on the order of about, we'll call that about 40 to 45 knots. There's one 50 knot pixel uh, located about uh, two miles to the southwest of KSJT Doppler radar. And that's about where we uh, found that the microburst uh, began. Uh, yesterday. And this, uh, what we found as well with the damage is some of the winds were from the northwest to southeast within this microburst based on the damage pattern. And what that tells us is that the winds were not blowing straight away from the radar, so we were not sampling their true velocity. Uh, the winds were much stronger indeed than the radar showed. And you'll notice as we go to the next frame that the wind speeds here have decreased to 30 knots or less for the most part. So really all we saw an indication of any strong winds was on one five minute sample of the radar and then it was gone. We'll take a look now at the Dias uh, radar. It's much farther away uh, which causes uh, issues that uh, were not uh, present with uh, the San Angelo radar. Uh, but it does give us an uninterrupted view, whereas the San Angelo radar had the little two uh, nautical mile ring of no echoes around it. And that's, uh, that's common around all radars, um, and it's due to a lot of noise right within the, uh, the radar area. But looking at the uh, information from Dias, as we back up, we see that uh, initially uh, here at uh, 5.04 p.m., uh, the storm looks a little more impressive than it did on San Angelo. And that's to be expected with storms that are very close to a radar. And the storm intensifies uh, right at about uh, 10 after 5. And then quickly, the storm diminishes as it moves off to the uh, south and west. Uh, that's pretty common um, after the fact when we can go back and look at these storms to be observed uh, with uh, downburst winds. Uh, the storm goes up and the core aloft falls down very quickly as the storm collapses. So. That's basically what we saw here in, uh, in San Angelo yesterday. We observed uh, 68 mile per hour measured winds at the uh, 
ASOS, which is the automated service observing system located on the far side of the airport, on the opposite side of the runway from where the damage occurred. Uh, but uh, over where uh, some hangars were damaged and we had significant tree damage, uh, we estimate the winds were on the order of about 75 miles per hour.